How's it going everyone? This is MindBlank, welcome back to my channel and I think I'm going to lay off of the Ryzen 7 benchmarking for a while after this video of course. But I thought I should end with something that a lot of people over on my 3600MHz RAM video requested. Essentially an improved test with the following two changes. So I've seen comments from people telling me that even a 2200 MHz GTX 1070 running high settings in 1080p is a GPU bottleneck. While I rejected this idea and kinda continue to, as I was already ignoring the real world testing factor if you think about it, I did manage to see their point. I still can't see many 60Hz gamers playing with high settings on a highly clocked 1070 in 1080p. Enter the 1080 Ti Beast which we'll use for this test. And before people telling me that 1080p on a 1080 Ti is out of place, think of the high refresh rate monitor users. Anyway, there's also 1440p real world benchmarks in here. As a matter of fact, this is a loaner card from a friend who is going to run his 1800X Ryzen and this very 1080 Ti on a high refresh rate monitor after removing the protective film he specifically asked me not to remove. This is clocked at 2000 MHz core and 11.7 GHz effective VRAM clock. The other thing I changed is I also paired the 7700K with 3600MHz CL16 RAM. Yes, testing is again versus a 7700K. If you want to see Ryzen 7 compared to a 6800K, I recommend Joker's video which has many benchmarks included, check the description. Other small changes on the Ryzen platform are me running the EFI version 0081 on the Crosshair 6 and having some secondary timings a little tighter like they are on the Intel platform with XMP enabled. I am running some high voltages to help with this though. And with that being said, let's check out the standard opener, Battlefield 1 in DX11. Forgot to mention this in the chart title. 1080p shows very similar behavior to my last test. It does seem that Frostbite plays nicely with the added thread count, although favoring high clocks. In 1440p, Ryzen gets even closer to the 7700K while offering better 1% and 0.1% lows. In fact, I found this trend in many of my tests. In situations where the focus is more on the GPU side of things, it does seem to offer better low average frame times. Speaking of which, frame times for this game in both 1080p and 1440p, there's nothing really outstanding. I do have a new metric though. I did go ahead and measure GPU utilization of the 1080Ti. I've done this not to gauge how CPU limited we are as this is not always a straight up 100% sign of this, but rather to see how much can both CPUs leverage from the huge power this card has on tap. So here they are. At 1080p you can see that even the 5GHz i7 is still leaving performance on the table. You'll see that in other titles more prominently. But let's move on to Mass Effect Andromeda, which is running on the same engine by the way. It behaves very similarly to Battlefield 1 with the exception of higher lows on Ryzen on both 1080p and 1440p. We again see the Ryzen catching up in more GPU bound scenarios to the 5GHz i7. 1080p frame times do show some spikes for the i7, which I can't say that that bad, but they're there even in 1440p. Taking a look at the average GPU utilization shows that at 1080p both CPUs leave untapped power on the table, which naturally is getting leveraged in 1440p as one should expect. Let's talk a little about GTA 5. I've seen comments in the 3600MHz RAM video pertaining to unusual results in GTA 5 for the i7. So I went ahead and investigated this matter. The test area I'm using is exhibiting some nasty hiccups on the i7 with the CPU being constantly above 90%. That's why I thought it's a good test to measure CPU performance. The problem is that when searching for a new spot to place my benchmark, I haven't found one single area on the map that stutters as badly on the i7. So so for now, I'm dropping the previous test area and moving on to this one. I'd like to specify though that the Ryzen platform didn't have stuttering at all in my old area, but I can't 100% attribute this to limited i7 threads. It might be something else that's wrong here. Anyway, the i7 is a hit here on all counts, however turning off your preferred FPS meter will make these CPUs indistinguishable with both spitting out high average frame rates. I hope you all noticed that switching to 1440p, both CPUs show slightly 
under 1080p performance which makes you think there's a severe CPU bottleneck on all platforms. And sure enough, by checking the GPU utilization, that's exactly what we get. Neither of them is near to the 1080 Ti's actual frame rate output in this game. It's strange, GTA 5 cares for faster clocks but a 5GHz i7 is still the bottleneck. So how much higher does this game actually need? That's a rhetorical question by the way, cause we are checking out Crisis 3, which I love to benchmark. It's a very scalable engine and it still looks so damn good in 2017. It really likes threads, that's why the dips are so much more manageable on Ryzen 16 of them. Switching to 1440p, the focus is on the GPU and we can see the i7 is keeping up here on the 1% and 0.1% lows. Looking at 1080p frame times, I can tell you exactly where those dips are, when I either look towards or move towards towards the area where you have to dodge the bombs in the welcome to the jungle level. That's still to this day extremely CPU demanding like the entire level to be honest. 1440p is much the same although frame times are much more quiet in the beginning since we are GPU bound on both CPUs. Looking at GPU utilization we can see the 7700K behind the 1700X at 1080p while both being on par at 1440p. Watch Dogs 2 is really liking high thread CPUs as well as high clocks. It also greatly benefits from RAM overclocking so we get to see pretty similar performance here for the two CPUs which is carried over to 1440p where the gap closes as expected. If you look at frame times for this game there are no huge spikes here for either CPU although the 7700K is looking a tad cleaner. Same situation for 1440p. The GPU utilization graphs show that we are still a little CPU bound in some cases at 1080p regardless of the chip you're running. Mafia 3 is very badly optimized, I'll just say that from the get go and you'll see why at the end. While 1080p shows a faster i7 in all areas, trust me this is nowhere near what the 1080 Ti can actually deliver. If we look at 1440p strangely, and I double check this, the CPUs switch places with Ryzen being faster on all counts. Frame times look very jittery on both CPUs and resolutions which begs the question, this game doesn't like a highly clocked i7 and doesn't doesn't care for more threads either. What does this game actually need to perform well? I mean, look at the average GPU utilization, it's a disaster at 1080p regardless of the CPU. There's just so much untapped power from the 1080 Ti that it's not even funny. However, Overwatch is where I spend the bulk of my gaming time now. Both CPUs do an excellent job here, although for a competitive player that higher 0.1% load that Ryzen sees is something to be noted. And the situation repeats itself in 1440p with Ryzen still being slightly ahead on the averages. Looking at frame times, they're about what you'd expect for 1080p, although the 7700K does have two strange spikes. The same spikes are back in 1440p, accounting for the lower 0.1% and 1% lows we've seen earlier. Fortunately, this game is highly thread aware and very nicely optimized, thus managing to squeeze the 1080 Ti out of all its power on both CPUs and resolutions. I left these two games for last and there's a reason for that, so I'll point you to my previous video so you can get up to date. Deus Ex Mankind Divided in DX11. Although running on the same engine as Rise of the Tomb Raider, this is better optimized. So we see very similar averages at 1080p with a closing gap at 1440p. Frame times look nice and quiet save for some peaks accounting for the lower 0.1% of the 7700K. 1440p is even more quiet although Ryzen is exhibiting more peaks. Anyway, both these CPUs left leverage the 1080 Ti just fine here, even in 1080p. And last, it's Rise of the Tomb Raider Geothermal Valley DX11. There's some potential issues with this title in DX12 and DX11 if you ask me, on Ryzen and Nvidia cards. Like I said, check out my previous video on the subject. Anyway, this really likes high core clocks, so the i7 is clearly ahead here. Even in 1440p, there's still a 15 FPS gap. There are few areas in this game that are CPU demanding though, but we are testing CPUs here, not GPUs. Strangely enough, frame times look pretty quiet on both CPUs and in both resolutions. And I say this, I'm referring to the strangely part, since neither CPU is anywhere near to tapping out the 1080 Ti. For 1080p, both results are absurdly low, and I think this is the only title here that's so CPU limited even at 1440p. It's up to you to decide if you want to take this benchmark serious or not. 
And yes, it's wrap up time. Will a GTX 1080 Ti be held back by an overclocked Ryzen 7 CPU running at least, in my opinion, 3200MHz RAM? Well, you do have the numbers now to figure this one out since I will refrain as usual from giving you my opinion. I will say though that I can't see anyone struggling on a 120Hz plus monitor with a Ryzen CPU. I don't think anyone's able to enjoy Rise of the Tomb Raider Ultra at 1080p at a constant 120 plus FPS in geothermal valley. This is the outlier in all these tests, but then again, I don't know how many even play this game anymore, although it's a very good one to be fair. I'll also let these numbers serve as a reference for whenever Vega comes out and I get to check it out here on the channel. I really expect to see your comments, questions and suggestions down below. I may not reply to each and every one of you, but I assure you that I read something like 95 plus percent of your comments. And thank you for supporting this channel by subscribing. See you next time, everybody. Bye-bye.